leader, and two men had been seriously wounded. What's more, public opinion turned against them even more. In the aftermath of the shootout, Roberts was praised by many for his courageous stand against overwhelming odds. The gunfight at Blazer's Mill was the beginning of the end for the regulators. I don't think there's any question. The, the gunfight at Blazer's Mill follows hard on the heels of the, the murder of Sheriff Brady in the streets of Lincoln, and that the two were uh, essentially public relations disasters for the regulators as well as physical disasters in terms of the loss of the regulator captain, uh, Dick Brewer, at, at uh, Blazer's Mill. Buckshot Roberts, in my estimation, was the, you know, you're talking about a real tough guy, gunslinger, uh, there was your man, uh, and doesn't compare with uh, any of these other people. Uh, he stood his ground, and he was a man about it, and uh, in the face of death, did it. When you're tracking the life of Billy the Kid, and you get to Blazer's Mill, how can you not root for the man who they were trying to kill? I mean, here you have 13, 14 men, four or five go around to arrest him. One lone man, he can't even raise his elbow up. They, he got buckshot, and that's why they call him Buckshot Roberts. And they say, you're under arrest. They're all around him, and he says, not much, Mary Ann, and pulls up his Winchester and starts firing as fast as he can go. They used to call it the lead pump. It was a pump, lead pump. He hits... Charlie Baudry in the belt buckle saves his life. I mean, imagine that. Here you have a missile going 800 miles an hour, and it's three feet away from you, and it hits your belt buckle. George Coe has his gun there on him, and the, the next bullet goes down the barrel and takes off his trigger finger, just takes it off. George, uh, uh, John Middleton is shot in the chest. He made fools of the regulators. He basically wiped them out in one gun battle, and yet when the story is told, somehow it's the kid who's the winner. Since all this took place, well, I've read a number of articles about different things, and one thing was that has always disturbed me is the two men that were killed there, Buckshot Roberts and Dick Brewer, were buried at uh, Blazer's Cemetery, and uh, Dick Brewer was killed outright, and uh, Buckshot Roberts lived another oh, 18, 24 hours. Some, he, he lived quite a while. Anyway, they went ahead and built, made the coffins. They knew he was mortally wounded. They made those coffins and uh, put uh, Dick Brewer in one of them and put him in the, a double grave they had dug. They only dug one grave so they wouldn't have to dig two holes. And then they just left it open until Buckshot died, and they put him in the other casket and put him in there and buried him, in, and they're buried side by side. I think the Roberts killing uh, really made them look bad uh, because it looked like they all ganged up on this one guy who put up a hell of a fight. There's no doubt about that, you know. Uh, if there'd been more than him there, they, they'd have, they could have been in serious trouble. My grandfather was at the mill at that time. He was 13 years old, and that was in 1878 when the uh, Lincoln County fight occurred there. And uh, he got to see all of it. And uh, he had several vantage points that he worked from and hid, hid around and saw, watched it as it took place. But I think his memory is pretty authentic as, as he saw it. Anyway, uh, in later years, when I was a kid of about nine or ten, well, 1932, I guess I was ten years old, the American Legion had a picnic over at the Blazer Mill, just down the canyon from the mill. And uh, at this picnic, George Coe, who had his finger and thumb shot up at that fight, and uh, my granddad debated the fight at the Blazer's Mill, and there was quite a contrast there. Grandpa saw Billy the Kid as a renegade, and of course George worked and fought with Billy the Kid, and he's quite a hero as far as he was concerned. In the latter part of April 1878, James Dolan's fortunes took a turn for the worse when his company went bankrupt. He lost his big store in town, which would eventually become the Lincoln County Courthouse. Meanwhile, the fighting continued to escalate. On April 29th, 
a posse of Dolan men ambushed three regulators, killing their new captain, Frank McNabb, wounding Ab Sanders, and taking Frank Coe captive. Later, the Dolan posse men rode into Lincoln and took up a position at the east end of town. The regulators learned of the posse's arrival, and the next day, April 30th, a four-hour gun battle raged in Lincoln. Amazingly, no one was wounded or killed. About two weeks later, the regulators, under new captain Doc Skurlock, led a raid on James Dolan's cattle camp. They scattered the livestock and killed Manuel Segovia, who had killed regulator captain Frank McNabb. Then, in late June, the factions fought at John Chisholm's ranch house, where the regulators were holed up. All these battles in late June of 1878 were bloodless. Shortly thereafter, investigators were sent to Lincoln County from Washington to look into the Tunstall murder and the open hostilities. Alexander McSween, who had been hiding out, joined his men in the field. The investigators left Lincoln, and tensions built up again as the war in Lincoln County raced towards its final climactic battle. Even as the Lincoln County War escalated, the U.S. Army at nearby Fort Stanton was ordered to stay out of this civilian conflict. In the end, it was up to McSween and Dolan to fight it out. On the night of July 14, 1878, Alexander McSween arrived in Lincoln with 60 men. Although he abhorred violence, he was ready to fight if he had to. Upon their arrival, the McSween men took up four strongholds in town. Here at the Montano store, the Ellis store, Juan Patron's house, and the McSween home, which at that time stood in this lot just west of the Tunstall store. On the morning of July 15th, Sheriff George Pepin, the county's new law officer and a Dolan ally, rode into town leading 40 men. The Dolan forces already held the Torreon, a fortress-like structure built years earlier for defense against Indian raids, and they also took up position here at the Wortley Hotel. Although McSween had more men, his forces were scattered throughout town with no way to support each other. It was a tactical blunder. I don't think McSween tried at all. I think he came home from out on the trail. He wanted to go to his house. That was really important to him. If he, if he was planning on defending himself, the Tunstall store was built to be an impregnable fort. They could have stayed in there. They'd still be in there. Nobody could have driven them from there. I mean, the thing was built with double windows and th double thick and walls all the way around. It's a fort. So he goes right next door to a house. This is a guy who was depressed and once again, like Tunstall, thought he could solve things legally. That's how he thinks. And he, there was absolutely no, um, there was absolutely no strategy. Uh, they, George Coe says they stopped in Picasso and got Martin Chavez because they respected him and asked them to, him to lead them into Lincoln. So ostensibly, he was leading the McSween force. But what does he do? He puts half of them in the uh, Montano store and the other half down in the uh, McSween house. That's ridiculous. And so it was, it was a blunder, yes, but a blunder implies he was trying, and I don't think he was trying. I think he went to his house and basically said in his, his head in his hands. During the next three days, a stalemate developed. Neither side could figure out a way to break the deadlock without exposing themselves to deadly gunfire. Then, on July 16th, from atop the McSween house, some regulators spotted a rider approaching from the west and opened fire on him. What they did not know was that the horseman was a soldier from Fort Stanton. Although the trooper was not hit, he reported back to his commander, Colonel Nathan Dudley, that he had been fired upon. Nathan Dudley was a 20-year veteran whose tempestuous career was marked by extremely poor judgment and who was the subject of several disciplinary actions by the Army. He was a vain and pompous man, and although he was ordered to remain neutral, he held an intense dislike for Alexander McSween. On July 17th, the regulators compounded their first mistake when they fired at two soldiers who, along with an army doctor, were trying to aid a wounded Dolan man. Colonel Dudley was now at his wit's end. On July 19th, explicitly disobeying standing orders, Dudley led a column of troops into Lincoln. Although he made a point of proclaiming his neutrality, his actions in the following hours heavily favored Dolan's side. After setting up his camp on the north side of the street, Dudley turned his field cannon on the Montano store. The regulators inside fled and joined their cohorts at the Ellis store. Dudley then turned the cannon at the Ellis store. 
at which point the majority of regulators inside took to the hills, not 